Hello, oh, welcome to Prezium Technologies. I am Venkat. This is part 6 of SQL Server. In this session, we'll understand what check constraint is and when do we use it. Now, check constraint is used to limit the range of the values that can be entered for a specific column. Let's understand this with an example. I have this table called TBL person which has got this age column. In reality, age of a person cannot be negative and along the same lines, it's impractical for a human being to be alive after 150 years. So the age column, you know, should be taking values between 0 and 150. Okay, but if you look at the data type of this age column, it's an integer. By the way, if you want to find out the, you know, the data type of any column in SQL Server, there are several ways. Okay, one of the easiest ways is you expand the tables folder within the database and you go to that specific table and expand the columns folder and you can see that the age column is of type integer and it allows nulls. This is one way. Another quick way to find out the information about the columns that are present inside the table is highlight the table and press Alt F1. So that should bring up the columns and their respective data types as well. So if you look at the age data type, it is of type integer. So since age is integer data type, it can allow any allowed, you know, valid integer. For example, let's try to insert a row into this table. So insert into TBL person, let's say, I want to insert ID of four and the name of the person may be Sarah and email sts.com and maybe gender ID since she is a female, let's say two and age. Now look at this, since age is of type integer, I can enter something like minus 970, okay? And if I try to execute this query, the row will be happily accepted into the table. So for the age column, I'm able to enter an invalid age, okay? So is it possible to prevent numbers like this being entered? See, all I want to allow with this column is a number between 0 and 50. If anybody tries to enter a number outside of that range, I want to throw an error. Is that possible? Absolutely. Using the check constraint of SQL Server. It checks the values while you enter them, and then if it falls outside that range, it throws an error. So how do we add a check constraint? Like any other constraint, check constraint, you know, can be added to SQL Server in two ways. One is graphically using the designer. The other one is obviously using a query. Now first let's see how to do that graphically using the designer. So since it's a constraint, you can go on to the constraints folder in SQL Server Management Studio. By the way, you have to be in the table under the table folder. So I want to do it for TBL person table. So expand the TBL person table. There you should see a constraints folder. Right click on that and select new constraint. So this should bring up a check constraints window where we can basically add the constraint information. Now remember a constraint is just a boolean expression which returns a true or a false. Okay. Now what's our aim? Our aim is that the age column shouldn't be allowing a number less than zero or greater than 150. Okay, so how do we do that? You add that expression here. And whatever expression that you enter here should be a Boolean expression. It should return a true or a false. If it returns true, then the value will be allowed to be entered. If it returns false, then it doesn't allow the value. Okay, so what we want to do is the age should be less than, I mean, greater than zero and age should be less than 150. So anytime anybody is supplying a value for this age column, it has to be within that range. It has to be greater than zero, less than 150. Click OK. And another thing that we have to do is give it a meaningful name. Okay, just by looking at the name, you should be able to tell, okay, this is a check constraint on this table for this column. Okay, and the common convention is that for a check constraint, we use ck prefix, ck underscore the name of the table on which we want to create that constraint, and for the column to which we want to create that constraint. In this case, it's the age column. And then you have another option here, check existing data on creation. Okay, so what does this mean? 
if there is already invalid data which doesn't fall into this criteria you know this constraint will fail you know it doesn't you know it basically will will not succeed in getting created okay so it checks the existing data so you can turn this off or alternatively you can delete that bad data okay let's close that but then when I try to save it that's when we get an error so unable to add this constraint okay so what we will do first is we will go ahead and delete that invalid row so which is that invalid row uh, the record with ID 4 so let's delete that from that table so delete from TBL person where ID is equal to 4 so we deleted that invalid row now all of the rows are valid for us so now let's try to save this and it gets saved okay now let's try to execute this query and see what's going to happen so when I try to execute this query look at that you know the check constraint is kicking in it's telling okay the insert statement conflicted with the check constraint ck underscore tbl person underscore age the constraint that we have just created on the other hand if I supply a valid age maybe 10 years and if I try to execute this query it happily gets inserted so if we select all the rows from the table you should see that Sarah has got the age of 10 right now okay now let's do one more test let's say we are inserting another Sarah with ID 5 and let's say here instead of passing a value for age now remember age column is a nullable column which means you don't have to supply a value for that you can just pass null okay so if I pass null what is going to happen to that boolean expression that we have written okay now if you remember the boolean expression is age should be greater than 0 and at the same time it should be less than 150 now is null greater than 0 or less than 150 you know this is an unknown value you know the boolean expression returns an unknown result in which case the constraint passes and allows null to be inserted so if we run this this query will be executed why because the boolean expression doesn't return false it just returns unknown because you cannot compare null with anything so uh, it doesn't return false that's why it allows nulls to be interest, uh, inserted so you can add nulls and you can add any valid values that fall within 0 and 150 okay so how do we drop a constraint now you know that we have added this constraint using the designer so obviously if we expand this folder you should see that constraint there okay so we have this constraint now how do we delete this constraint or drop this constraint again you can do that graphically or you can use a command to do it graphically you just right click on that and delete and if you want to use a command a SQL Server query it is just like dropping any other constraint so obviously if you want to drop a constraint it's like you're altering the table because the constraint is for the table so we have to tell we are going to alter the table so alter table which table is that TBL person and how are you going to alter this table I'm gonna drop one of the existing constraints in this case the check constraint that we have created let's refresh this and we should see that check constraint there okay so I want to drop this constraint so let's copy that constraint name so alter table TBL person drop what do I want to drop I want to drop a constraint and then specify the name of the constraint so you press F5 command completed successfully let's refresh the folder and the constraint shouldn't be there anymore okay now let's go ahead and see how to add a constraint using SQL query now if you look at the presentation it's very simple the general formula for adding a check constraint not only check constraint any constraint for that matter okay so alter table table name add constraint the name of the constraint so here we are adding a check constraint so we use this check keyword and then a boolean expression if you remember while we are doing it graphically we did it in that boolean expression window but here we have to do that within this parenthesis okay so let's see how to do that so alter table table name and what we want to do we want to add a constraint so add constraint and then you have to give the constraint a meaningful name so check constraints by default will have a ck prefix underscore the table for which we are adding this constraint in this case it's going to be tbl person and for which column 
it's going to be for age column. And then what type of constraint are we going to add? Check constraint. And within the parentheses, we have to specify the Boolean expression. What should be our Boolean expression? We don't want to allow values for age, you know, less than zero or greater than 150. Okay, so age should be greater than zero and age should be less than 150. That's it. So I press F5, command completed successfully, refresh the constraints folder, and you should see the constraint once again. And if we try to add any value, something like maybe uh, 950 years, press F5, it should give an error. All right. So that's how we do that. And remember, if this Boolean expression returns true, the check constraint allows the value, otherwise it doesn't. Since age is a nullable column, it's possible to pass a null value for this column when we are inserting a row. So when you pass a null for this age column, the Boolean expression evaluates to unknown and allows that null value. So it's possible for you to insert nulls because why the Boolean expression that's involved there returns an unknown result, okay? So when will a check constraint prevent a value from being entered whenever the Boolean expression returns false. Okay, and to drop a constraint we have seen, we use this alter table and drop constraint, the name of the constraint. On this slide you can find resources for ASP.NET and C-Sharp interview questions. That's it for today. Thank you for listening. Have a great day.